welcome to my sewing room. I have such an exciting show for you today with some really, really elegant things to share and, and wonderful techniques also. I'm so pleased to have today as my guest, Marlis Bennett. Marlis is training consultant for Bernina of America. She has brought some wonderful things to share with you. First is this absolutely beautiful Father Christmas, done all in heirloom, even from his little silk dupioni hat all the way down to the wonderful um, insertions and beadings and laces and even a wonderful Swiss trim around the bottom of his outfit. Okay, I'll set Father Christmas right here. Now, this is called a reticule. It's the Victorian word for purse. This is done with the beautiful built-in embroideries and I'm even going to turn this up and let you take just a little peek on the bottom. You see the Victorians loved elegant things and you certainly can make those same wonderful elegant things on your sewing machine. Talk about elegance. Let me share with you another pillow that Marlis has brought to share. This has wonderful shades of ecru and white. And I'll be real honest with you, those are two of my very favorite combinations. And I might add that this little basket is one of my designs that I have done for Bernina. Here is another version of this very, very elegant pillow, this time with MB, that stands for Marlis Bennett, my guest for today. Just look at all the wonderful things you can do using your sewing machine and very, very, very quick techniques. This is one of my very favorite blouses in the whole world. It's called the Australian blouse. It is the perfect it's, a, it's almost like an artist palette to put the machine embroidery. The beautiful decorative stitching that goes down both sides. You see this beautiful front panel right here? Well then the look at the beautiful, beautiful built-in embroidery done in pale shades of greens and peaches. And then let me turn around to the side and show you this gorgeous sleeve. The stitching looks almost like smocking. It really isn't. Uh, smocking or lace, one of the other. And then there's some machine faggoting that holds the two pieces of the sleeve together. Absolutely beautiful. Then I have another magnificent blouse to share with you. This white handkerchief linen blouse has two magnificent cutwork designs, and I might add that the cutwork designs are from my new embroidery cassette done for Bernina of America, and I just happen to love it. And by the way, those are pure turn of the century because they came off of my antique designs. And now then, let's go on over to the technique boards and share with you how you can do beautiful cut work, whether you do it the old-fashioned way, as I call it, or the new way with built-in machine embroidery. You heard me say a minute ago we were going to show you the old-fashioned way for cut work. Well, actually, ladies and gentlemen, the old-fashioned way was by hand. I guess I should have said the first and traditional way for cut work if you have straight and zigzag on your sewing machine. And then, of course, the magnificently easy way if you have one of those cat's meow sewing machines that you just put it in there and embroider it and every, all the work is done for you. Let's talk about the traditional way. First of all, you have a pattern. You trace it off and then you trace your pattern onto your fabric, which this happens to be a linen. The next step in the traditional way is to come in and cut out all of your areas because cut work, as you know, has cut out areas. So I will trim it all out. Then there are three steps when I go to my sewing machine with just using a zigzag. The first step is to do with the Richelieu bars, which go across and connect it because those little pieces would flop apart if they didn't have connections. The second step is to go all the way around the whole design with your heavy zigzag. Oh, your stitch width will be about two and your stitch length will be a satin stitch, whatever that is on your sewing machine. That, by the way, you do have stabilizer behind this. Step number three is to come in and cut away the stabilizer, making a beautiful cut work. Now, if you happen to have a wonderful sewing machine, 
machine that does all of this for you. All in the world you're going to do is to hoop your stabilizer and your fabric into the machine, press a button, and it will go straight stitch all the way around the outline. Now the only little handwork you have to do is to trim away the fabric only. Leave the stabilizer. In this case, I trimmed away the linen. I left the stabilizer and then simply press the button on the machine again and it will go around and do every bit of the work. The Richelieu bars, all of the outline stitch and then after that you will gently remove the stabilizer. Now to share with you some of this complete magic, I have once again to introduce to you my dear friend Marlis Bennett who is training consultant for Bernina of America. Marlis, welcome back to the well, show. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> We're going to start today, I'm using one of your designs, and I'm going to start with this beautiful ivy leaf. And I've got my pattern, I've traced it onto my linen right here, and I've drawn all the markings. Although I'm going to cut some of these areas out, I've got all the markings there for me. There are two different ways you can do this. You can do this with the wash away stabilizer, and then draw your markings on there, because you've got to do the Richelieu bars first. Or you can do it if you have larger areas with a very good few, um, tear away stabilizer. And that's what I'm going to use today to show you how to do this cut work by machine. By machine. By if you machine. just have straight and zigzag mm -hmm. on your machine. And we're going to only do a small area because you don't want to sit and watch me sew and I've got so much to show you today. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with, I've started with a straight stitch. I'm going to come in and just do take little stitches making the Richelieu bars going into the fabric going back and forth several times. This gives strength when you're going to go back in and put your zigzag over the top. And then I'm going to, instead of cutting or my thread, I'm just going to travel free motion to my next step. That means your uh, feed dogs my are down. My feed dogs okay. are down. Okay. And then I just come back and forth several times and then I have my bar made. Okay. If I want, if I'm ready to do my uh, my zigzag now, my machine is set up for about two and a quarter stitch width and a very tight satin stitch. And then I'm, oh I need to change my foot. I want to change the foot and go back to an open toed embroidery foot so I can see where I'm going put this on and then I just bring the feed dogs back up and come forward and then that way I have one of the bars done. My next step of course would be to go around the whole outside and it's like applique. You want to do the outside layers first and then come in and do the main design of your of your uh, cut work because that way it lays nicely on the top. All right, that looks here's easy our, enough. It is, yeah. <laughs> here's our finished piece, and this is done the home way by on the machine, where I've taken and done the Richelieu bars first. And then I've gone over and done the zigzag over the top. And so you can see it looks as well, as good as anything you've done. Now maybe the hand works just a little finer, but... Well, mine wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> who has that much time to spend Most to do it don't. by hand anymore? <laughs> My favorite way is to do it by machine, using the machine to do the embroidery. And how I do that is I make sure that I have my machine set up for embroidery. And these designs are off the new Martha Pullen card. And I use my hoop. You want to have the hoop size adjusted. Use the hoop that's closest to the size of the design. I have, you have taken, several size hoops then to choose from. Oh, several. Okay. And I have taken my linen and used a fusible spray to attach the linen to my stabilizer. After I've done so, I hoop it and then I put it into the embroidery unit and let it go ahead. I'm going to select my design and we're going to start this, although this one has already been pre-started, we're going to let it come up and we're, I'm going to show you that the first thing it stitches are the outline stitches on the machine. Give it a two minute, oh a minute to bring up the design. 
It checks the just all size. by itself. All I just by think yourself. That's magic. <laughs> it's wonderful because everything's done for you. You don't have to go do anything. And you know, Marlis, I might add that all of my designs that I've done for the new banana cart are completely from my antique collection. Are they? Absolutely. There's not. There isn't one thing that's been drawn. They're it's all from my whole collection. They're wonderful. <laughs> They're absolutely wonderful. Thanks. I had um, quite an opportunity to work with this, and have really had a lot of fun playing with the designs, and I'd call it playing. Because playing. Well, that's what it is. It's relaxation and stress relief. It is. It's very much so. I'm not sewing to save money. I'm sewing to lower my blood pressure and for stress relief. Can you identify with that? Uh -huh. Oh, I, me too. <laughs> me too. Anyway, while it has sewn the outside edges, and then I cut away my areas right here, the nice thing is that I can go ahead and not taking this out of the hoop, Put it back underneath the machine to let it finish, finish its job as soon as as soon as it is through with the um, with its work on the first go around. So and you just trimmed away the linen and left your stabilizer. I left there. my stabilizer. That's kind of like cutting fabric from behind lace. I know I, mm -hmm. we always have to kind of practice that a little bit so you don't cut the stabilizer you don't, away. And if you do, don't worry about it too much. If you use a good quality stabilizer, it's not going not to. Not a problem. It's then. not a problem. We're going to go ahead and let it start its second row of All stitching. Right. And it and goes we can around actually it again. sit here and play cards or whatever while it does that again. Right. But I'm going to stop this because I've got the finished product here to show you. When it finishes, you have your fabric right here with the stabilizer still behind it and your design. And what I like to do instead of cutting or pushing this out, because this is delicate work, is I take the mm -hmm. points of my scissors and just very carefully trim around and then pull it out from behind so that you can see that it comes out very, very easy. And this is just a tear away. When you're finished, you have your beautiful design that looks like this. And then you're ready to do whatever you need to do with it. It's just so easy this way. Many more, few, many fewer steps than the other, their traditional way. Oh my goodness, you can, go, you can leave the machine and come back when That's it's finished. That's true. <laughs> what I want to show you now is another little neat take on your cutwork designs. This oh. is the one that was on that blouse earlier. It is the cutwork design here in its original form. But I, what I want to show you is that you can also take that cutwork design and turn it into an applique. And it's very, very easy. Whereas before, we didn't have, I've just inserted a piece of fabric over the top, okay. let it do its first stitching there, and then instead of cutting away my base fabric, I have cut away around the outside edges of the fabric that I laid over it. And then when I put the fabric back in, I now have the pretty design around the edges and I have what is called applique. I just think that is fascinating how you can use another fabric and really have an applique and press the machine and go away and do and whatever you want to do and come yeah. back and do a little stitching. Marlis, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful technique of cut work. And now Marlis has a beautiful, beautiful home decorating project for you using, I guess you have guessed it, cut work. Look at this beautiful table runner. Built-in embroidery designs, I might add once again from my antique collection. Coming down and, and more, three more of those designs right in the middle. And I think this is an absolutely wonderful kind of free motion Richelieu bar strip here. Oh, Marlis, I think this is fabulous. Could you share with us how, oh. about how this was put together? <laughs> it's really pretty easy. First of all, I drew out all my lines on my fabric. I've got my center design right here and then one on one side and then I'd put one more on the other. Because they're so large I drew 45 degree angle lines from center and then that way turned the hoop and hooped my fabric with the template so that the lines matched up, the, the lengthwise line matched up this way and then therefore I could get that in. I then finished with the rest of the embroidery. Those bars were created using a quilting tool. It's one of the be flexible, bendable guides is yeah. what that is. <laughs> and I just put it down into a shape that I liked and drew my lines around it. Once again, drawing them, then cutting out the center, 
Remember to do the Richelieu bars first and your zigzag around it. What I'd like to do now is show you a little bit of hem stitching and how to achieve the, the corners on that. I pulled threads for my markings instead of marking on the fabric and then pressed in my quarter inch seam on both sides on the li marked lines. That's what was so nice about it. I then took my fabric, lined up my marks this way, and would sew a diagonal line right here to give me that mitered corner. We're going to all pretend that this is nicely mitered. What I want to do now is show you how to achieve the pretty, um, what did you Hem call it? Hemstitch. <laughs> Hemstitch. I forgot the word there for a minute. I'm using a double wing needle. And what it is, a double wing needle has a wing needle on one side and a straight stitch needle on the other. And what I'm going to do is make the first pass, and you can see through your fabric with this nice stainless steel uh, plate here, you can see light and dark areas. And I'm going to keep the wing needle going off onto the single layer of linen and keep the straight part, the straight needle onto and catch the hem. And you're going to make two passes. You're going to come down the first time. It's just a regular straight stitch, regular length. You know, Marlis, I've never known exactly what to do with that double wing needle. I'm so happy to see what you're doing. The work is, it's, oh, you can it achieve like some wonderful things. Now, when you come back down, you want to make sure, and you have to do a little bit of adjusting here, uh -huh. you want to make sure that the wing needle hits in the same holes that it made previously. And the going back down is a little bit te more tedious. You really want to sit and watch it. That is fascinating. Next. And then you have the beautiful holes that are created by the wing needle right on the edge of your hem. That is absolutely fascinating. And what a beautiful hem stitch to go along with that beautiful Richelieu bar, kind of that snake. Oh, it's mm -hmm. just wonderful. And you know my very favorite are those wonderful pieces from my antique collection oh, in the middle. Them. Marlis, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. And now then, we have some wonderful cut work done on our pattern for this series, the New Zealand blouse. I just love doing heirloom sewing on very, very tailored clothing for women. This is the beautiful cut work technique done on the New Zealand blouse, which we are certainly enjoying for this series. Now let me share with you kind of something cute. Uh, for the collar, we went ahead and lined the underneath of the circular curved part on the top with white, so when this wonderful peachy pink cut work was done, it would show through with the white underlining. This technique right here is very tailored and very beautiful. Can you see the tatting that has been attached? And this is a heavy, heavy satin stitch that, it, that has attached that tatting. A little bit of a zigzag here and a zigzag there. Very, very tailored finish. We've used that same finish on the sleeves with a scallop or a scallop, whichever way you pronounce it, and the tatting that has been, first of all, just a little bit zigzagged on, and then that beautiful, very, very tight zigzag, which gives it that pretty color. And this blouse is that wonderful peachy pink that I love so much. This blouse is very tailored. Let me just show you something else. Rather than having puffy sleeves, like little girls' sleeves many times are, there are three very tailored pleats there on the sleeves. Can you see that? There is not anything except tailored details, or there are not anything but tailored details on the whole blouse. Now let's see how to make that beautiful detail where the tatting is attached in such a pretty way. First of all, I have to turn under the collar of the blouse or the sleeve. I mark my little lines, whether it's straight or whether it's scalloped, and turn it under like that. Next, I'm going to butt together the tatting to that turned under area of the collar or the sleeve. Simply butt it together, zigzag it together, and that is step number two. 
I'm going to need to trim away that excess uh, linen, in this case, that I had folded under to make the little fo finished edge of the collar. So I come in and trim it away. And then at that point, before I do the heavy, heavy zigzagging, I am going to need to put a stabilizer. Now, why am I going to need that stabilizer? Simply because if I came in and did that heavy, heavy zigzagging with just a little bit of linen and a little bit of tatting, it would simply look like ocean waves. It would go up and down and up and down, and that is not the finish that I would like to have. Okay, after you trim it, you put your stabilizer behind it, and then for that beautiful, beautiful finish that lays just as flat as can be, you're going to come back in and do the heavy zigzag in whatever contrasting color you would like, or even just a darker color, or even the same color, but I think it's pretty to use a little bit, a little bit of a contrasting or a little bit of a darker color, and then of course you'll take your stabilizer away. Now one of the things that I really like to do is to use an edge joining foot, especially when I'm working with a fabric such as this linen, which is a little bit heavier, and then the tatting, which is very, very delicate. So I have an edge joining foot on here, and I'm simple. This is the first step when I've just folded it back, and I have the edge joining foot on, and I'm just simply going to zigzag, attaching the lace. And you know what else I'm doing, as you can see? I'm using my little shish kebab stick, which nearly every woman in Australia and New Zealand sews with a shish kebab stick, which you can buy at any grocery store, a hundred for 79 cents. It lasts you forever, assuming you don't lose it. Anyway, the shish kebab stick kind of holds the lace in there just a little bit, and this wonderful edge joining foot separates it. And by the way, you don't have to have an edge joining foot to butt this lace up to your linen. You can just look real carefully and sew real slowly, but if you do have an edge joining foot available for your sewing machine, it certainly does make it a lot easier. That's step number one, simply zigzagging the lace to the finished edge of your fabric. I really love this blouse and I think you will enjoy it also. Next, won't you come along with me to my attic where I have a really special surprise for you. This magnificent, magnificent blouse has the cut work done all by hand. Look at this wonderful high collar. I say wonderful, ladies, I'm kind of glad we don't have to wear collars that high, but isn't it pretty? Then I'm gonna come down and show you the beautiful, beautiful hand cut work that somebody spent hours and hours and hours doing. Then on down the blouse is quite pretty too with just simply folded tucks, narrow tucks and a little bit wider. And then on the back of the blouse, there is, oh, some more of this wonderful uh, cut work. Do you see how they took it all the way around to meet in the back? The little hidden buttons, the hidden placket, and once again, the pretty tucks that go all the way down the back. For our sewing from the heart for today, I have a letter from Chris Schonig from Olympia, Washington. And Chris writes to me, Dear Martha, for several years, women in our church, the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, have met once a week to make quilts for those less fortunate. They are distributed by the Lutheran World Relief. In 1997, we sent 631 quilts, plus health and school kits and baby layettes. The ladies in our group call ourselves the Peace Corps, P-I-E-C-E, -E, the Peace Corps. And another interesting thing about these ladies' uh, Peace Corps, they said there were a few things they made that were not needed by the Lutheran World Relief, so therefore they reached even further out and said they sent baby clothing and other needs to the baby bank at the Boulevard Road Church of Christ. They sent good quality women's clothing to the YWCA Displaced Homemakers Program. They sent other clothing to the local clothing bank, which is a Seventh-day Adventist project, and they made suitable clothing, night clothes, and lap robes to send to the Rulan Healthcare Center. Chris, you and your friends there at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Olympia, Washington, are certainly not only reaching out to the wonderful uh, needs with the Lutheran World Relief, but also reaching out to so many other groups there in your local community. It's just amazing to me that you did 631 quilts plus all kinds of other projects. Chris, I'd like to thank you and your other ladies there in your church for all of the work you're doing and for the joy you're having, I am sure, of using your sewing machines to help those in need and those less fortunate around the world and also right there in Olympia, Washington. 
Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I hope you've had a lot of fun and learned a lot about making all different types of cut work also. I would certainly like to invite you to come back to visit with me the next time.